this new announcement from CATL is one of those moments that makes the rest of the battery industry take a bit of a deep breath and go, oh no, this isn't good, is it? Within the last few hours, CATL has confirmed testing results from their Nextra sodium ion battery, and uh, they also talked about this a couple of months ago, and it's causing a stir worldwide because if the numbers are accurate, it's not just a, a big improvement, it's the kind of shift that could completely rewrite the global battery industry. Hello folks, thank you so much for joining. The channel's been growing majorly. In the last few months, it's doubled in size, and uh, I really appreciate that, thank you so much. I work really, really hard on these videos. Here are the channel members. These are the people that either either choice to cho choose to join for a couple of dollars a month, almost everybody actually, and then some people are on the free tier on Patreon, so, so because they want to be a part of it. So, thank you so much for the support. Let's just jump straight into what has happened and why it matters. Obviously, sodium batteries now are sort of taking over. They're in this last year and a half, they've become something really quite special. CATL's new sodium ion battery isn't. Uh, a prototype anymore. It's uh, finished testing. It's passed all safety standards and it's entering mass production in December this year. This is going to be like when LFP chemistry came into the market and you know in 2019 majorly 10% of the cars uh, EVs were LFP battery chemistry. Within a couple of years it was over half that sort of thing and this year it's meant to be 65%. So what we're seeing is that shift again but into the sodium ion realm basically, because it's, it's going to be a very big ship and even quicker. So it's, uh, yeah, not just for EVs. This affects everything, really. Uh, cars, grid scale storage, uh, renewables, batteries for your house, uh, even fossil fuel economics as well, because when energy storage becomes half the price and lasts three to five times longer, then everything changes, really. So here's what is shaking up the industry. China's new national battery safety standard comes into, the, uh, into effect on July 1st, 2026, next year. The goal is really simple, it's to eliminate EV fires entirely. I've talked about this before, so even if you smash it into a wall, you have the worst crash you can imagine, or anything at all, that has to not happen. You can't have a battery or a car that sets on fire. So to be certified, batteries have to pass a series of extreme tests for thermal runaway, meaning they can't catch fire even when they're punctured or crushed or short-circuited or anything like that. CATL's Nextra sodium ion battery just passed every single one of those tests. It's that good, both at cell level and full pack level. That's huge. Like, it's like a really big deal. Because one of the only things critics still bring up about EVs is fire risk. Sodium changes that equation completely, completely subverts it. And uh, this battery doesn't just solve safety, it fixes two of the major issues lithium batteries still face. So what we're seeing here is, a, I don't know, roughly, batteries are going to become considerably better and so some of those big issues that we have with batteries like they're a bit slow to charge and you lose range in in minus 30 stuff like that will just almost completely vanish and the safety the issue that that will just vanish so cold weather performance and lifespan catl says the next battery maintains 90 percent of its capacity at f minus 40 degrees celsius just to give you perspective if you're norwegian you'll know about this i remember being in a norwegian mountain years ago and uh when cars get to maybe minus 20 minus 25 minus 30 they start to stop working they start to have issues it's actually quite tricky uh for n normal cars anyway like like uh conventional cars with petrols or diesels they can start to have issues and just not work you know batteries don't start and that sort of stuff so 90 percent of its capacity at minus 40 which is really really cold that was, that's very exciting for canadians i reckon and it can also handle plus 60 degrees celsius heat without degradation no lithium pack on the planet could do that that's not a small thing it means evs can finally handle extreme climates without losing range if you live somewhere that regularly hits minus 20 or minus 30, that for you, that would have been a, li a bit of a li real limitation. You'd lose 30 or 40% of your range on bad days. I remember there was a, I've never owned a Tesla in Norway or anything, but I know that some people have. I was speaking to a person who did, and last winter reported that their range on their car was something like 40% less on a really, really, really cold day at the top of Norway. So with sodium, that loss drops to almost nothing, basically. Now let's talk specs because they are genuinely impressive. Energy density is 175 watt hour per kilogram. For context, BYD's current blade battery, the one they've got right now in like the Atto 3 and, and that sort of thing, is like 160 watt hour per kilogram. It's, it's pretty good. 
but it's they're better. Sodium ion batteries now are better than that. So not only is CATL's new battery pack cheaper, it's actually uh, it's, it actually has, it has more energy density in it. Price wise, we're looking at roughly half the cost of today's LFP batteries, and the company says that will fall further as production scales and the cycle life as well. More than ten thousand full charge cycles before dropping below 80% capacity. So to translate that into, into real-world use, CATL says these packs could last the equivalent of 5 to 6 million kilometres of driving. That's unheard of. No battery in history has ever uh, lasted that long while still retaining 80% of its capacity. That's not marketing spin either. That's, that's you know, this comes from the world's largest and most successful battery manufacturer. So CATL doesn't make vague promises about distant technology. They're actually... They actually build it and then they ship it and they get stuff approved and they're getting it done. This is the amazing thing about this new technology. And that's what makes this moment as significant as it is. The global battery market is already quite nervous. Korean battery firms are running at least 50% capacity and even big names like uh, LG Energy and Samsung SDI are watching this unfold with genuine concern because if CATL can make a battery that's safer, longer lasting, uh, more temperature resistant, uh, half the, more than half the cost, you know, way more than half the cost, how do you compete with that and what does that mean for your business model? Obviously, that's going to cause big issues. This is good news for buyers, though, for consumers, for us, and for the planet, but terrifying for competitors. CATL has even confirmed these batteries are now being integrated into their battery swapping network across China. In August alone, they opened more than 100 new swap stations where you can drive in and swap your depleted pack for a fresh battery in three or four minutes, roughly. It's a clever move because it means that the tech is being deployed right now, not years from now. So even if the customers don't technically own the battery and they, you know, they won't really care about the condition or the health of the battery because they're swapping them out, as is, the, as is often the case with swapping, they'll still benefit from the incredible lifespan uh, safety and the safety of sodium ion. Now a quick note on charging speed as well. CATL says these packs can handle 5C charge rates which is roughly translates to uh, like 4 or 500 kilowatt peak fast charging. That means potentially going from 10 to 80 percent in under 10 minutes on future ultra fast chargers. I think when it gets to like uh, like Zika for example now they've got a car that can do um, you know a thousand kilowatt. Yeah, I don't think people really want that, and it's going to cost a lot more to get that technology in the cars. So I think four or five hundred is probably the sweet spot. People are going to be pretty chipper with it, I think. So a few years ago, sodium ion was seen as a lab project, something with promise but poor energy density. Now it's not 120, 130, 140 watt hour per kilogram, it's 175, which is better than LFP chemistry, and it comes with all these advantages, and it's way, way, way cheaper and entering large scale production. So in short, it's safer than lithium performs better in cold and heat, lasts five times longer, it costs roughly, you know, well under half as much. So yeah, this is this is this isn't just another battery announcement. This is the real disruption moment of the industry. And the industry has been waiting for it for a long time. Lots of people raving on about sodium ion batteries in the comments from my, my videos for the last year or two. EVs built with these packs could easily out outlive their owners for sure. And after decades on the road, these you know, these packs will probably end up being used for home storage or grid storage, something like that, effectively recycling themselves without even being dismantled. That's that's pretty cool, isn't it? So for, for the competition, this is uh, daunting. Uh, it's a bit, a bit scary, probably. For customers, it's incredible. And for the environment, it's a breakthrough that could bring affordable electrification to pretty much every corner of the world. What do you think? Are sodium batteries the point where the EV industry truly tips. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and uh, thank you very much for watching.